The Zenfone 10 is absolutely hands down one of my favourite smartphones of 2023. If I had to sum it up in one word, that word would be goosh. And you can quote me on that on the poster, Zeus. The Zenfone 10 is Asus's latest flagship smartphone and it starts from 799 euros or 749 British puns, which is rather bargainous for a flagship blower and means it's tasty competition for the Pixel 7, the OnePlus 11, etc. And I've been using it as my full-time smartphone for over a fortnight now, so here's my in-depth Asus Zenfone 10 review and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, let's do a retrospective unboxing so I can chuck that word in the title and win all of the SEO. So inside the box, besides that Zenfone 10, you also get one ASUS power adapter, a USB cable, and ASUS has also chucked in a protective case. Not a condom case, it's not transparent and it is of the rigid variety, but hey, I'll take what I can get. And there you have it, unboxing segment complete. Now, despite those troublesome pre-launch rumours that it would grow to over 6 inches, the ASUS Zenfone 10 is still blissfully compact. So what we have here is a weenie 5.9 inch blower, one of the most mini mobiles of 2023. In fact, I personally can't think of a smaller one, but then it's very early in the morning and I've only had the one pot of coffee. These are a couple of my other favourite compact smartphones from 2023, the Pixel 7a and the Xiaomi 13, and the Zenfone 10 is comfortably dinkier than both of them. If you're seriously sick of grappling with 6.5 inch beasts, then salvation is literally at hand. And this phone is refreshingly lightweight as well at just 170 grams. But the drawback of all this is that sometimes when I'm out and about in old London town, I'll do that thing where you suddenly slap all of your pockets in a mad panic thinking, Shit, what have I done with my phone? Not realizing that it is actually still in there. It's just so tiny and light that I can't actually feel it. At the front end, you've got reasonably skinny bezels surrounding that compact display. Quite the feet and then flip it around and wow, what an arse. Apparently that back end is made from a bio-based polycarbonate surface. It's more environmentally friendly than last year's model and yet it still feels pretty lush. It's a bit of a brain bender because when you're clutching it, it feels like it's quite a sort of soft touch texture. But when you start stroking it, it feels kind of cardboardy. It's weird. Asus hasn't really changed up the actual aesthetics very much for the Zenfone 10 and that's fine by me because I really liked the look of the Zenfone 9, it was distinctive. It's a very clean design, quite subtle branding. Those camera lenses once again staring into your soul like a pair of cold dead minion eyes. And actually these do jut a wee bit from the arse end which does give you the inevitable desk wobble. You've got yourself five colour choices, pretty generous. You've got black, white, blue or a fresh new Aurora green model and also this here red one which is actually probably my favourite because it's just punch you in the face, super bold, does not give any f**ks. You've got Gorilla Glass Victus protecting that front end and after two weeks of being royally banged about the place so far just one teeny tiny little scratch that I've only just noticed. Meanwhile, the metal frame and that back end still in perfect nick. This thing looks pretty much box fresh. And like all good flagships, the Isu Zenfone 10 is IP68 water and dust resistant for that added bit of peace of mind. And now let's have a shifty at the software. And like all flagships, the Zenfone 10 is running a good bit of Android 13, soon to be upgraded to 14. And on that front, Isus is promising two OS upgrades and four years of security upgrades. So not quite as great as some rivals like Google and OnePlus and Samsung, which are promising more OS updates on top. But it's still pretty respectable. It means you can keep this phone for a good three, four years, not have to worry about lots of malware and other borkiness getting on there. And I really like the everyday experience here on the Zenfone 10. You can choose to have a completely stock Android UI or go with the version that Asus has fondled and fiddled with. And to be fair, even this altered version is pretty ruddy stock compared with a lot of the big rivals out there, One UI, Mi UI, etc. Just with some extra bonus bits sellotaped on top. So for instance, you can once again swipe and poke that edge mounted fingerprint sensor to perform various actions. Personally, I've disabled the swipe for notifications because I find I accidentally activate that all the time. But I do have the double tap to load up the camera very handy for when your cats or your kids start doing something cute unexpectedly. And new for the Zenfone 10, you can now actually swipe that fingerprint sensor in order to skip forward and back through a YouTube video. Very handy if you've got constant ads or sponsorship shenanigans. 
Unfortunately, however, for now, at least, that swipey swipey can only be mapped to one particular action out of this list. So if you want to swipe to skip through your YouTube videos, you can't use it to drag down the notifications bar, skim through web pages, etc. You could also double or triple tap that arse end in order to activate a feature like the torch. Something I'm completely obsessed with. It's so handy. I've used it so many times just in this past two weeks. And with that always on display, you can now add a photo of your choice as you can do on some rivals like Samsung phones. This gives it a bit of personality, a fluffy face to cheer you up when you need it. And that's not all, Asus has chucked a few other extras on here like a dedicated gaming mode which I will bang on about in a bit. As for the storage, well you can get up to 512 gigs of space for your media, apps etc. Gonna take me a wee while to fill up that one. Sadly however, you can't expand this with a micro SD memory card if you do run out, you've only got space in that SIM tray for a pair of SIM cards. Now on the display front, the Asus Zenfone 10 boasts a 5.9 inch AMOLED panel manufactured by Samsung. Full HD plus resolution, 445 pixels per inch, so pleasingly crisp visuals. As with all flagship OLED panels, you've got poppy colours, you've got deep blacks, crispy contrast. Although at the time I shot this review video, the Zenfone 10 wasn't able to stream HDR content in Netflix. Hopefully that's just something that will get sorted ahead of launch. I have absolutely no complaints at all as far as the brightness goes, the auto brightness did its job perfectly and on that maxed out brightness level, even on a crazy sunny day, yes we do sometimes get them here in Blighty, I still had no issues with visibility when using the phone outdoors. It's not an LTPO display however, that refresh rate will switch between 60, 90, 120 and up to 144Hz for supported games and it can also drop down to 30fps for the always on display. As you would kind of hope for from a flagship smartphone, the Zenfone 10 sports a stereo speaker setup. Let's check it out. No, your eyes haven't got all wonky. Clutched here in my mitts, I have a fresh new smartphone from HTC. Starting from 499 quid here in the UK. So as you would expect from such a diminutive smartphone, the Zenfone 10 doesn't boast the most powerful speakers around by any means. But all things considered, it really ruddy goes for it. On that maxed out volume, the entire phone actually rumbles really hard, you can feel it vibrating in your hands. It's just about loud enough to get away with hearing what is going on in quite a noisy environment. And the clarity actually stays pretty good, even when you max it out. And hey, 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 check this out, it's only got a ruddy headphone jack slapped up top there. So by my count, that basically means if you want a headphone jack in a flagship smartphone, you've got a choice of the Zenfone 10 or the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5. And for your Bluetooth streamer needs, you've got support for Aptex lossless here, high-res audio, etc. Same as last year, so you can enjoy crazy good audio with a supported pair of headphones or earbuds. And if you count yourself as a bit of an audio file, you like to tweak and fine-tune your sound, you do have fast access to that Dirac Virtual Audio Wizard here in the notifications. Good bit of equaliser action, otherwise I just liked leaving it on the dynamic, which automatically tweaks the sound to suit whatever you're up to. Now for the performance, no real shocks or surprises here. Like most other flagship smartphones in 2023, the Zenfone 10 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And that's backed here by up to 16 gigs of RAM. So as you'd imagine, the everyday experience, creamy smooth. And no worries if you want to get gaming in your spare time as well. Perhaps the dinky 5.9 inch display isn't the ideal way to get mobile gaming. If you do spend a lot of time hunched over your phone playing a bit of Call of Duty, PUBG, whatever, you might prefer a bigger display. But I certainly enjoyed my time blasting through a good bit of Genshin Impact on the Zenfone 10 on those highest detail settings. The frame rate stayed nice and fluid, a couple of noticeable tiny wee judders, but nothing major at all. And even if you're absolutely obsessed with bashing these gribbly things in the face with a massive f off club, well, no worries because you can get gaming on this thing for hours. The thing does not overheat despite its compact stature. And as you might expect from the makers of the ROG phone, Asus has of course chucked on a dedicated gaming mode. You can quickly call up that Game Genie menu at any point with a quick swipe from the camera and it's absolutely packed to the pits with all kinds of great tools. Various performance modes, notifications, blockers, resource management. You can even track the performance with on-screen stats. Now because it's a Wii in, the Zenfone 10 does have a dinky 4300mAh capacity cell stuck away inside. That is the same battery capacity as last year. But thankfully if you'll recollect, the Zenfone 9's battery life wasn't complete arse. 
And it's more good news here on the Zenfone 10 because somehow, miraculously, that battery life seems to have improved yet again. I'm putting it down to that fantastic Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 platform. You can expect around seven to eight hours of full on screen time from a single charge of this thing. And that's with mixed use, plenty of camera play, plenty of video streaming, bit of gaming. I never once managed to kill the Zenfone 10 in a single day before stumbling into bed. It can actually go for a full couple of days if you're quite conservative with the use. When it comes to powering it back up again, well, it's not the nippiest around. The Zenfone 10 supports 30 watt wired charging, but you've got the usual scheduled charging smarts bit of steady charging and everything as well so you can bung a cable in its bottom overnight and not worry too much about balking the battery. Uh, of course one of the emissions from the Zenfone 9 last year was wireless charging but thankfully that's not the case here on the Zenfone 10. ASUS has given it full wireless charging support as you would expect from a flagship device in 2023. So let's finish up this Zenfone 10 two-week review with a squint at the camera tech and ASUS has once again chosen Sony's dependable 50 meg IMX766 sensor for the primary shooter, now with improved 6-axis gimbal stabilisation. This means that that entire camera module can shift around to counter any shaky hand shenanigans. And as you can see there, you've got plenty of on-screen guidance as well to really help out. It's your standard ASUS camera app, so nice and easy to get to grips with. You can basically just point and shoot if you like. You've got a handful of toggles and other options to play with. And as I mentioned before, you can quick load the camera with a quick double tap of that power button. Now the biggest problem I found with the Zenfone 10 when using the camera was the focus, which struggles sometimes to latch onto a living subject. That was quite a surprising development and hopefully just an early bug that will get sorted right out. But as long as the focus doesn't sh** the bed, you can expect some great looking pics. The Zenfone 10 carefully processes every photo you snap, rendering each element individually. So like the iPhone, you will get bright, well-balanced HDR shots. Those darker areas appear much lighter than they do in real life, which does kill some of the atmosphere, but it means you get more visible detail without saturating those lovely blue skies. Meanwhile, vibrant subjects are cleanly captured and those tones accurately reproduced, so they really stand out and look lovely. The portrait mode is generally fine, although if you boost the bokeh effect, it sometimes looks like your buddy has been cut out and placed on a different background entirely, and other times it just goes mental and starts smudging out everything. In dimmer conditions, you do lose some of that fine detail. Quite a lot of my test photos had a bit of grain creeping in as images are artificially sharpened. Tones are also less bold and bright, but unless you're shooting in near dark and as long as your subject stays still, the results are usually fine, if not quite Pixel or S23 Ultra levels. And there is a dedicated night mode to help brighten things up a bit. And the Zenfone 10 also packs a fairly basic 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter with a 120 degree field of view. I found the colours were fairly consistent with what the primary camera spaffed out, but you will get distortion if somebody stands too close to the lens. And in low light, you'll get a lot of blur if someone actually moves. And there's no telephoto zoom option here. You're limited to just that primary shooter and the ultra wide angle lens, but you do also have a quick two times zoom toggle, which basically just digitally crops in if you need to get a bit closer to your subject. And you can actually shoot up to 8K resolution video on the Zenfone 10, matching the biggest and best phones out there. And my sample clips definitely get a thumbs up. The focus again occasionally stumbles if your subject gets quite close, but colours are accurately captured and HDR ain't an issue. Also, audio recording helps to reduce wind noise and cleanly capture sound from all directions, although you will still get a bit of distortion when it's proper blustery. No complaints with the image stabilisation, got a bit of gimbal action for the win. You can prance about the place and keep on shooting, no worries at all. And even in low light, the Zenfone 10 doesn't stumble. I was impressed by just how clean a lot of my night footage actually looked. As for the selfie cam here on the front end of the Zenfone 10, that's a 32 megapixel shooter. And this is perfectly respectable, I actually preferred it to the Pixel selfie shooter. The portrait mode is again okay, but that bokeh blurring can once again be a little bit aggressive, and you might want to remove any earbuds before you hit the shutter button. And that right there is what this bold northern git reckons of the ASUS Zenfone 10 after using it as my full-time smartphone for two weeks. And I gotta say, absolutely love stashing this thing in my shorts and carrying it around all day. It's been a lot of fun to use. Only thing that I didn't 100% got on board with was that camera. So if optics are a big thing for you, you want the best possible looking photos any time of day, I would say maybe go Pixel instead. 
But aside from that wee grumble, I absolutely adored every other aspect of the Isuzu Zenfone 10. It's just gloriously compact. It's, it just brings tears to my eyes how miniature and lovely and wonderful this thing is. And yet still packs a hell of a performance, fantastic battery life, and of course features like a headphone jack, which you don't get on most other flagship phones. All of that, plus to boot, it is more affordable than your S23 Ultras and quite a lot of other super premium blowers. So that's what I reckon anyway. What do you guys think of the Isuzu Zenfone 10? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.